Hello, and welcome to ZTech's webinar, Increase Confidence and Productivity in Bolt Hole Eddy Current Inspections. My name is Michael Musman of ZTech. I'd like to thank everyone for joining us today. As an on-demand webinar, there is no live question and answer section at the end. Instead, you can email your questions at any time to webinars at ztech.com, and we will respond directly back to you. Before we begin the webinar, I'd like to give you a quick overview of ZTech. ZTech is a global NDT leader. For over 50 years, we've advanced the science and standards in both ultrasonic and eddy current technologies, setting new heights in inspection performance, productivity, and predictability. ZTech's proven expertise and complete product portfolio serve the inspection needs of our customers worldwide in transportation, aerospace, power generation, manufacturing, and oil and gas. ZTech is a subsidiary of Roper Technologies. Let's get to today's session, which will be presented by Nicholas Cardillo. Nick is the Eddy Current Sales Engineer Director. He has worked for ZTech for 20 years, helping to develop probes, software, instrumentation, and robotics for Eddy Current applications. Nick is a U.S. Navy veteran serving in the nuclear propulsion field. With that, I'd like to turn this webinar over to Nick. Thanks, Michael. Here's what we're going to uh, discuss today. I'm going to give a brief introduction to the MIS-21C and how it affects the human performance side of the POD equation. Then I will go into detail of how you can use the instrument to visualize the layers in a bolt hole, followed by some application examples. The MIS-21C is a truly handheld and lightweight eddy current instrument. It has a touchscreen interface. Uh, you can use it to manip manipulate the data or you can navigate around the instrument using typical touchscreen gestures such as pinch and zoom. It supports all the traditional eddy current probes that you would expect, such as uh, pencil probes, slide probes, conductivity probes, and rotating scanners. In addition, this is the first handheld eddy current instrument which supports eddy current array probes. The MIS-21C supports all the common probes and scanners you are currently using today. The MIS-21C is designed to support all the typical eddy current exams being performed today, and it has built-in support for tomorrow's inspections as well. For today's inspections, here are some of the features which enhance these inspections. First, there's the data review buffer. Um, this has many advantages, such as allowing you to focus on data calibration instead of painstakingly uh, making adjustments such as um, gains, angles, having to do that real time. I'll go into more detail about this soon. Uh, same thing for filters. You can recall your data, make adjustments to the filters, and watch how the filter setting affects the signal real time, as you can see here. This ensures you are using a filter setting with enough bandwidth to prevent distorting the signal of interest. Another benefit of the data review buffer is focus. Um, it can be difficult to pay attention to how you're scanning while watching the display simultaneously. Uh, with this data review mode, you can scan your inspection area, and then you can stop, put down the probe, and then you can review the data after the scan. Uh, this allows you to focus all your attention to flaw detection. Uh, we've incorporated the same C-scan technology that we use for array probes and we apply it now to bolt hole data as well. Uh, this results in an improved detection and layer identification. You can store I don't know, uh, 50,000 plus data files and screenshots on the MIS-21C, so practically limitless. We've also incorporated a feature uh, called Operating Point Stability this is for handheld probes. Uh, this allows the operating point to stay in a set area of the screen without drifting around. The MIS-21C supports tomorrow's inspections as well. It supports eddy current array, which can increase POD decrease inspection time, and provide high-resolution results. All this data can be saved and exported to our desktop software, UltraVision ET, and this can be used for further analysis 
historical tracking, or other specialized studies. The MIS-21C supports encoders. This allows data to be acquired at a consistent data density, um, and this improves data quality. In addition, the location of the signals of interest can be recorded. Having this high-resolution, digitally recorded data can be used for some of the initiatives being implemented on the NDE 4.0 front, such as automatic data analysis and digital twins. Now let's focus on bolt hole inspections. Um, so C-scans have been a required tool uh, in the nuclear for nuclear inspections for decades now. And we've taken the same technology and we apply it now to bolt hole inspections. Uh, the C-scan makes it easier for the inspector by making it easier to identify signals of interest. And this intrinsically increases the probability of detection. I've said that the formula for POD is the technique itself plus human performance. Uh, factors that contribute to reduced human performance are loss of focus and attention to detail. Let's talk a little bit more about that. So when you perform a bolt hole inspection today, you have to actively scan the hole while watching the screen. So if you're paying close attention to the display, then you may pay uh, skip past a crack with the scanner. Likewise, if you're paying too much attention to how you're scanning the hole, you may not see the split second that, that the crack appears in the impedance display. This is even worse when calibrating. So when calibrating, you must precisely scan over a small corner notch with one hand while actively manipulating gains, amplitude, filters with the other hand. Your eyes literally need to be focused on two things at the same time. As you, as you can see, this can be characterized as an error-likely situation, and this reduces human performance, which in turn reduces POD. This error-likely situation is prevented by having the ability to calibrate the data in a review mode. Here is a better way to calibrate data that my colleague Jerry Park will now demonstrate. So what I'm going to do is first, I will, I will gather, uh, I will scan the liftoff signal, okay, and then I'm going to take a good scan of my calibration block, and then it did a review. Now I'm ready to review the data and calibrate the data in review mode. Okay, so um, I'm going to uh, change my display here, go to uh, my sweep display everybody's familiar with. First I'll go to my liftoff signal and um, I will go to my calibration tab and select adjust rotate I will use my directional buttons to rotate my signal and uh, I'm going to rotate that to 180 degrees okay. and then I'm going to select my calibration signal and, um, and adjust my scale so select adjust scale and then I can adjust select adjust cursor to um, select select the signal I'm going to use for calibration so okay, so that looks like a good signal now I can adjust uh, get out of adjust cursor mode now I can adjust my scale I'm going to um, right now I'm in uniform mode so I can actually I can adjust the scale uniformly um, or if I select the middle button I can adjust my scale independently so I'm going to adjust here uh, my horizontal scale and to bring that in to about three divisions from null okay and then I'm going to use my up and down arrow to adjust the vertical scale to about four divisions from null okay 
And once I'm done, select done. Now my scale is um, set. So now I can see here, and you can look at um, all the different uh, signals here. Okay. So um, as I said before, this instrument comes with a variety of displays, and uh, the best part is this uh, C-scan display, and you can see how easy it is to pick out our flaw signals. So you can see here there are three separate flaw signals in this bolt hole, very easily visible. Other ways the MIS-21C improves human performance and therefore increases POD is having excellent data quality. We made a concentrated effort to make the MIS-21C a very quiet instrument, and this results in a very low system noise. This results in a high SNR, which in turn means cleaner data, therefore makes it easier to identify flaws. The high-resolution color C-scan imaging makes it very easy to identify signals of interest. Take a look at the image here. It's very obvious where the signals of interest are. In this example, there are two notches in close proximity with each other. You can clearly see two distinct indications. On a traditional impedance display, this may come up as one combined signal. We've also added two filters, which further enhance data quality. They are the SNR filter and the High Pass 2 filter. In this video here, I'll demonstrate the SNR filter. This is a filter which reduces baseline noise, but does not attenuate the signal of interest. So here's your signal here. And let's say you want to get rid of this baseline noise, but you want to keep the entire signal. So I turn it on, and here's my SNR limit. So that's the lowest it goes, and it's in divisions. So it looks like this noise is approaching one division. So if I go up, for example, as I approach one division, it's going to start getting filtered out. And then you can see there, all the baseline noise is gone, but the signal that you want is still there. So that's the key here. A normal threshold filter would eliminate this entire signal here and only keep this. But this SNR filter actually keeps the entire signal. Next is the high pass 2 filter. This filter uses a proprietary algorithm to increase the amplitude of short crack signals without increasing noise. You can see the effect of the high pass 2 filter here on the image on the right, where the image of the small crack signal is more than doubled. Anyone familiar with bolt hole exams knows about the common NRK calibration block. Uh, there are many different types of these blocks, but they all basically have three layers of metals with a small EDM notch at the top and another one at the bottom of the first layer. Uh, it has a clean middle layer and a long EDM notch at the third layer. Now let's see what the, what the data from one of these holes looks like on a C-scan. So in this view here, there are two C-scans. Uh, there's a, a 2D, I call this a waterfall plot, at the bottom, and then a 3D, a 3D display on the top. You can easily identify the 3DM notches from the NRK block, and uh, notice the amplitude of the notch signals as compared to the no noise floor. It's a very large difference. This is a very high SNR. The data is displayed on a scrolling data buffer, so you can view the whole in its entirety. You can stop acquisition and review the last 60 seconds of data if, if desired.
A challenge in the aerospace industry is knowing which layer a flaw is in because this may determine if a repair is warranted. Repairs themselves can cause damage to a hole and bolt holes have been unnecessarily repaired because where the flaw was located in was not accurately known. The C-scan display on the MIS-21C now allows the inspector to see the different layers. Here is data from the NRK block, but this time the channel is focused on detection of the layers in the hole. As you can see here, you can easily see three separate layers in blue and the interfaces of those layers in green. Now let's go back to how inspections are performed today. Here is a traditional impedance and sweep display. You have to focus on this while also focusing how you are scanning the hole. You watch for any signals of interest to appear, which really could just be a split second. And uh, this video will show you what I mean. Let's do that one more time. Yeah, that's what I said. So here's the quiz. How many indications did you see? Which layer were they in? If you're not sure, can you record the data and ask someone else? You can see the challenges and risk to human performance with this approach. So I froze the scan here at a particular moment in time. It shows that there are two flaws in the same circumferential plane. Did you catch that? This is an example of how holes are inspected today. You need to pay attention to the screen and also pay attention to how you're scanning the hole all at the same time. If you're not watching the screen, you may pass a small crack go by, or if you don't scan straight and slow, you may skip past the flaw. If you do see something of interest, then you, you need to sit there and find the exact location of the signal and attempt to characterize it while actively scanning it. This is obviously difficult to do and it requires practice and experience. This is more of an art form. This is not an engineered solution. Here's a picture of the hole in that previous example. There are two EDM notches in the third layer at uh, 9 o'clock and at 3 o'clock. There is a helical gouge at, in the top layer. Now imagine a seeing squiggly lines appear and disappear in the impedance display. You can have an image which closely matches what you see here visually. They say a picture is worth a thousand words. This is the same hole inspected with the MIS-21C. I use two independent uh, channels. One is de dedicated to flaw detection, and the other one is de dedicated to layer detection. Let's take a closer look and see what information we can get from these images. So here's EDM1. It's in layer three, as you can see there. Layer, you see, see the three layers. And it's through thickness. It's through the entire thickness of the third layer and it's at the 9 o'clock position. Here is EDM2, smaller. It's in layer 3, right at the upper interface. And it's at the 3 o'clock position. And let's go for the third indication. It's helical gouge. It's in layer one at, at the six nine o'clock position. And here's a here's a good example of how the C scan with the C scan you can really understand the flaw morphology. And this with this helical gouge is a perfect example. You can see how it runs diagonal through through the first layer. And with the MIS 21C here, you get all this information after you scan the hole once. Uh, you scan the hole. 
stop, put down the probe, and then you can review the data. So in this case, inspecting bolt holes is no longer an R form, but it is an engineered solution now. So let's review and compare the traditional impedance display to the C-scan display. So looking at the images here, which one better visualizes what is happening in the hole? Which one provides more information? It is providing more information so you can make a more informed decision. And this information gives you added confidence in your inspection. And that's what's important here, adding confidence to your inspection. Now let's go through some application examples. Uh, the first one here is crack detection in, uh, and location identification in the wing spars of Piper aircraft. So the FAA recently issued an airworthiness directive for certain models of Piper aircraft. This came about because there was cracking the wing in wing spars, which uh, unfortunately led to some fatal accidents. In the past, there was an option to do visual or PT exams, but this AD mandated that that a specific Piper service bulletin um, to inspect the wing spars using bolt hole eddy current must be performed. Here's a diagram of the bolt hole. There are three structures or layers within the hole, the spar box, the doubler, and the wing spar. The service bulletin states, the pass-fail criteria of, the, of this inspection is only applicable to the crack in the spar extrusion. So the ability of seeing the layers in the C-scan and identifying which layer the flaw was located in was the primary reason why the customer chose the MIS-21C for this application. Here's a picture of one of the planes. Uh, the bolt holes to be inspected are on the underside of the aircraft. As you can see, it can be a tight fit. Uh, remember when I was talking about human performance and the difficulty with ensuring you're scanning the hole correctly while simultaneously watching the display? Uh, so obviously being in this position makes that even more difficult. The inspector is at an ever more error-prone condition. However, now with the MIS-21C, um, he can now focus his, his attention on precisely scanning the hole, stopping, and then reviewing the data afterwards. Now here's a crack signal in the impedance and sweep display. Now we've added a 2D C-scan beside it, and this is to aid in flaw detection and so you can see the entire scan. Now let's switch to a total C-scan view. The image on the left is focused on flaw detection and the image on the right is focused on layer detection. On the left there, it is obvious there is a signal of interest. In the image on the right, you can see the flaw is in the middle layer, which is in the critical area of the wing spar. Um, there's some external noise in the data, so let's clean it up with the SNR filter. I'm going to turn it on and notice how the, the noise highlighted in the highlighted area is now minimized, but there's no attenuation to the flaw signal whatsoever. You can see there before and after. Um, all this data can be saved and exported to a PC for further analysis or archiving. Or in this case, a simple screenshot can be taken, which then can be exported to, um, to a report as an example. Another example is um, canopy, canopy seal longerons. Um, a manufacturing flaw in the canopy seal longeron of F-15s have resulted in cracking, which has led to, to in-flight breakup of the aircraft. Uh, the longeron is part of a multi-layer stack up and it is critical to know if a detective flaw is in the longeron or in the surrounding air, uh, layers. <clears throat> the space for the inspection is very tight 
and this has required uh, the use of two inspectors. Uh, one to sit inside the aircraft and scan the hold, and another to watch the display. Uh, when a flaw is found, then they have to use pr uh, crude probe stops uh, to know where the flaw is located. Now at the MIS-21C, this becomes a one-person inspection. Um, as the inspector can go uh, scan the hole, stop, and uh, review and analyze the data after the scan. Uh, the C-scan imaging pulls out the layers, and then, and then the data can be saved for uh, historical tracking purposes. So here's the data from a Langeron with the simulated corner notch. Uh, this is the same corner notch that's used for calibrations in the NRK calibration block. You can see uh, that the crack is easily identified and it is right at the edge of the Langeron. Being at the edge of the Langeron, it would be difficult to get this precise of a location from using crude probe stops. Another challenge is steel contamination because its signal closely resembles a crack-like signal. Um, to distinguish now uh, between the two, uh, we can use independent frequencies to differentiate the cracks from steel contamination. The first step is to use the C-scan to detect the signal of interest. It is easily identified on the flaw-sensitive channel on the right, and it is in the middle of layers one and two, as you can see there on the left. Um, the fact that it is in the middle of the layer tells me this may not be a crack, and that's more indicative of steel contamination. Well, let's let's see uh, let's see for sure. So now I want to flip to my impedance display so I can measure the phase angle on both frequencies. A true crack signal will not rotate between frequencies. It's going to maintain at about the same phase angle. Uh, steel contamination, however, will rotate clockwise on a lower frequency. You can see here on the 200 kilohertz channel, the signal is at 58 degrees. And then it rotates to 90 degrees on the 75 kilohertz channel. This tells me it's, it's not a crack, it's steel contamination. And the point of all this, uh, once again, it's, it's, it's about getting more information so you can make a more informative decision. And this gives you confidence, more confidence in your inspection. So that's a wrap. Um, first, I mean, thank you for taking your time to listen to me today. I hope you found this informative. And now you can take the next step. I just ask you, really, take a critical look on how uh, you're doing bolt hole inspections. Have there been progressive improvements to increase POD, reduce inspection time, or make it easier for the inspector? Or are you doing it the same way as you did 10 plus years ago? Remember, this is your inspection. Increase your confidence in your inspection. Always keep up to date with the latest technology and inspection trends. Be more informed. If you want to know more about the MIS-21C, go to our web website. There's a lot of information there. You can download um, application notes and watch videos. Um, you can go to our YouTube channel where you can view short uh, demonstration videos. And you can also follow us on LinkedIn to receive our latest news. Um, if you want a deeper dive, we can do remote demonstrations or we can come to your facility. Moving forward with technology can have its hurdles. Um, but remember that ZTech will always assist you with integrating new technology, um, such as giving subject matter expert training and assisting you with procedures and qualifications. And once again, thank you for your time. And here's my contact information if you want to reach out to me directly. Now I'm going to turn it over to Michael to close us out. Thank you very much. Thanks, Nick. On behalf of everyone at ZTech, thank you again for attending this webinar. If you are interested in learning more about our solution or have additional questions, please email us at webinars at ztech.com. 
To learn more about ZTech, visit our website or follow us on social media. This concludes our webinar. Thank you and have a great day.